Hi, my name is Kel, I'm a graphic designer, and welcome to my desk tour. <laughs> Today we're going to be doing a full tour of my desk. I'm a full-time graphic designer, I'm a freelancer, and I am fully self-employed, so I work from home all the time, and for the past year and a half, I've been a full-time freelancer, also still doing YouTube on the side, but also I do just regular graphic design work. So this is um, my desk. So. I think one of my favorite things about my desk is the wall behind it. This is filled with some of my favorite art and art that means a lot to me as a creative. It's stuff that I've made, but also some art made by some other really incredible artists. This one down here was made by a Portland artist about the year of protest, so all of the protests that have gone on in the past year in Portland. This is an insanely beautiful illustration. I will leave their info in the description box because they're a really cool artist and they're local to Portland. Up here I have one of my free Palestine posters done by our lovely artist Yasmin. This is a really beautiful poster. Uh, absolutely love having it up here. All of my art up here I like having a lot of my political art involved because it's a really big part of who I am. I have my Eat the Rich poster I did last year which is a three color screen print. And then up above that, I have my Black Lives Matter and Abolish the Police poster that we did last year as a fundraiser. To the right of that, we have the Joshua Tree National Park poster that I got at Joshua Tree National Park. And then I have my YouTube plaque. Um, I don't know why. Kind of a flex, maybe? And over here, we have the other Free Palestine poster by our lovely artist, Lu Jane. Having an inspirational space is super important to me, whether it's art that I've made or art done by other artists. All of it is just full circle with my creative process. I love just being surrounded by art that I really like. And so that's why uh, I have this gallery bowl. Uh, <laughs> and I think it looks cool. So yeah. Then we're gonna move on over to my lovely desk chair and my Crocs. Wow. Anyway, so this is my latest purchase, uh, which is something that I wasn't sure that I was going to do. If you follow me on Instagram, I've been talking a lot about desk chairs lately and asking you guys about desk chairs. I had this chair when I worked at Live Nation and oh my God, I love these chairs. The downside is that this is the Herman Miller Aaron chair. And if you know anything about Herman Miller, they're an incredibly expensive chair company. But the thing is, is that they are really comfortable. I have had the worst chair for years. I got it from Ikea so long ago, and it's a chair I've had, just, I've never given up on it. And my back would kill me in that chair. And I was like, oh, what is my back here? My back here, oh, I'm like, oh, I'm like, sit for two hours. My back feels like someone shot me. But it was my stupid chair. I didn't really care too much about chairs, but now I have back pain. So I decided to invest in a better chair. I got this one used at a local like office furniture liquidation store in Portland. So I got it for $6.49. And typically I think it's like $1,300 new. And I refuse to spend that kind of money on a chair and even the money that I spent on this is so much money for a desk chair. But I think it is worth it because I know these chairs, A, last a really long time, B, are really great for just anyone sitting for a really long time, but especially people who might have like sensitive backs. Um, I have a neck injury and I also have back pain. So good chairs are important. So this is my latest uh, purchase I'm still reeling from money that I spent on it, but I hope that I uh, use it for a long time. Now we're gonna move on to my actual desk. This is the 42 inch Husky workbench. I got this from Home Depot of all places. And one of my biggest issues when I was working with like some of my older desks is that they weren't very sturdy. 
I had a really cheap one from Target for like four years that was pretty good, it was pretty sturdy, but it was really small. And then I upgraded to like a tabletop thing from Ikea. It was super shaky and it was fine like when I was just working on like my MacBook and stuff because I didn't have like my big computer yet. Um, so I got the job done for the time, but when I decided that I wanted to upgrade my desk, um, we happened to stumble upon this one from Home Depot. And the second I like felt it, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> this is gonna be a really great desk. So the cool thing about it is that it has a little crank on one side so I can raise it up to be the perfect standing height for me. I'll raise it up. You don't need to record the whole thing. Ooh, wow. <laughs> So now it is fully raised to its maximum height. I do not know how tall this is. I am 5'3 and it comes to about my waist. I usually just roll my chair to like right there and then I essentially have a standing desk, which I know this is not something that's possible for everyone because some people are taller than me and might not be the perfect height. But for me, it happened to be the perfect height. So um, it's still like, if I shake it, everything shakes a little bit, but like, for a workbench or just for a desk in general, it's super sturdy and that is like a huge pet peeve of mine with some of my older desks is that they just shook all the time and it drove me crazy because I feel like everything was always about to collapse. So uh, yeah, I really, really like this Husky workbench. They have really big ones of these too, so if you're looking for like a bigger space, they have those. One of the most common questions I get about my desk is how I organize everything. And I am not a very organized person and I've learned to accept that as I've gotten older. I've learned kind of what organization means for me and I also allow myself to be a little bit messy. So when it comes to something like this, this is like the ideal type of storage for someone like me. I need like relative organization, but I am not like a super organized person where everything is in place. Um, so I allow myself to have junk drawers and some of my drawers are organized and then the other half are just a disaster. So this top one is a disaster and I allow myself to have a disaster drawer. I throw all of my random stuff in here and you know what? That's fine. But when you come down to my second drawer, I've got all of my cords and everything perfectly organized. Uh, not perfectly organized. They're like wrapped up. Most of them have like little cable ties or they'll have like little, like I don't know what these little like wire things are that I reuse. Um, so I have some of this stuff organized because I hate looking for a cable when I really need one. Um, so these are all in place. And then like, that's a junk floor. Oh, and then down here, I have like a, an accordion binder of like old paperwork. And then I have like crayons and my Prismacolor color pencils. So I always have these nearby because I do use them quite frequently. And then the rest of these I know are also junk drawers. And then this is my new accordion binder that I very recently got. And I use this for like all of my annoying admin paperwork stuff and also for like some client file organization. This thing expands to be absolutely huge. This was like eight bucks from Target. Um, so I'm looking forward to using this some more. I also have a lot of like paper folders in here, which I like using for different client. Like if I like draw something out or something, I'll put it in a paper folder and keep it in here so I know where it is. So if I like scan it or something, I have it nearby, but it's also like just too big. It does not fit in any of these drawers. <laughs> So, I keep it there. So coming on over to the stuff on top of my desk. Old Ikea lamp, it works just fine, gets the job done, I don't know. Um, I always keep my drinks and stuff on this edge because my hand moves very little over here. My right side is occupied by like my Wacom tablet and I usually have like other stuff over here. So this is specifically for my drinks only and I have my favorite mug from the Hutzpah sisters here and I always have a coaster for it because sometimes it drips and I don't want it to stay in my desk. And I always have a water bottle instead of a cup 
because I will spill the cup or the cats will spill the cup. So this is like my drink setup. Um, sometimes my water bottle's on the floor if my desk is really messy. So then moving over to the actual like computer setup. So I have my, what's, is this a magic keyboard? <laughs> Whatever, the regular uh, magic keyboard. And then I have this keyboard tray from Grove Made. They're a local Portland company and they offered to send me some stuff and I happily obliged because I like cool like desk setup stuff and I've been wanting some stuff anyway for a long time so they sent me this stuff. It's all made in Portland. And so they sent me this keyboard tray that I really like. It just elevates it a little bit and like, I don't know, makes it look, makes it look a, little, a little bit nicer, I don't know. And then I also have this monitor riser which I really, really like because it gives me the storage underneath, which is really nice because I never knew like where to put my big notebook and my iPad. I also have my headphone case. So it's really nice for like all of that to have a home that's still accessible, but not like away in drawers because I'll like forget that I put it in there. And then I have my Wacom tablet. This is the medium sized tablet I got it last year. I'll put like all the specs for everything on screen so you guys know exactly which ones I have. But this is my favorite Wacom tablet. I've had the small ones and I've also had the really large ones. I think for the money, the medium size Wacom tablet is the best because you don't get to use the full space on a Wacom tablet. So I'll unplug this. So you only get to use the space that is marked within these little tick marks. So everything else over here is like dead space. And when you get to the bigger Wacom tablet, that dead space gets even bigger. Yeah, you get more usable space, but I don't think for the size of the tablet and for like the extra $200, it's worth it. So I don't really tell, or I can't really tell a difference between the large Wacom tablet, which is the one I used to have, versus this one, and this one is a couple hundred dollars cheaper. So if you're thinking about going for one, I think the medium one is better than the large. Oh, this is the Wacom Intuos Pro medium. Um, I keep it plugged in. I don't use the Bluetooth option because I think it disconnects a lot and it annoys me, so I just keep it plugged in. I have this wrist rest. Wrist rest. It's not super like cushiony. Doesn't really do like too much, but I do like it because it keeps my arm off the desk and I don't get like a dent in my arm from it sitting on the edge of my desk. So when I'm using like my Wacom, it just prevents my arm from digging into the edge of the table, which is nice. I guess that's really what it's for. Um, I keep this right out of reach so if the cats run across my desk they don't send my pen flying into oblivion. Um, I used to keep it over here which doesn't really make any sense because I'm right-handed so I just moved it over here so it's like with my pens and everything. Moving under here I have my main notebook. I pretty much exclusively use one unless it's for like another like big side project, but this is the Moleskin 9 by 12 grid notebook. It is my favorite one that I've ever had. I've had so many Moleskins. This is for sure my ride or die size, and I like the grid over the lines versus the complete like blank pages. I do like the grids. So, and it's got a little, I don't know, one of these things. So this goes with me everywhere, no matter what. I don't know why, because I don't really look back on my notes that much but I'm very afraid of being without it. <laughs> Next is my 12.9 inch iPad Pro. I believe this is the 2019 model because I got it in early 2020. I got this case for it because it holds the pencil in place really well. So I really like this. I pretty much only use this for illustrating and when I'm on like the go, I'll use it for like putting mood boards together, but nothing too serious. It's just essentially like a more advanced Wacom tablet, if you will. If I, because sometimes I'm in the mood, in the, wow. Sometimes I'm in the mood to illustrate on my Wacom, but a lot of the times it is easier for me to illustrate on my iPad. So any heavier illustration stuff I do on my iPad, this is just more for like general computer use. But a lot of designers are different. Might not use it exactly like I do. Next are my headphones. I, oh, woke my computer up. I used to have AirPods, which is what I use like religiously for like two years. And then I decided to upgrade for more noise cancellation um, because AirPods don't really have the best noise cancellation and I need that sometimes so I can concentrate better. So do you, can you tell me what <laughs> these are? 
we'll put it we'll put it on the screen. Um, but these were also a recent investment. I really like them so far. I think they're really good for me. They work well for me. And they have a good little case, which I try to keep them in more often so the cats don't play with them. Move over to this little section. I have two hard drives that I do not keep plugged in all the time because uh, I've heard it's bad. I don't know, you shouldn't keep hard drives plugged in all the time. Um, so I have this top little one is a two terabyte one and then the bottom one I believe is a one terabyte one but it's a couple years older. So I keep those accessible because sometimes I do need to pull files off of them. And my Wacom pen, I'll just move this out of the way. I've got my USB hub thing which is super helpful because Apple put everything on the back of the computer which is really annoying and frustrating. So I have this here, really worthy investment. And then I have my just like, I think these are just like regular Crayola markers that I use for all sorts of fun projects. Got my scissors. And then these are the pens that I use. I've had these Muji pens for a couple years. I'm not like a huge like pen snob. Um, I know a lot of people are like really into pens. I don't really care too much about them. Um, I used to have more Micron pens, but they are really expensive. So uh, this is like my favorite regular pen. Pretty good. I have a box cutter in here and a sharpie in my little my little cup. And also I have this picture of Harry Styles because it was a gift from one of my friends at Live Nation and we just had pictures of Harry Styles on our desk. So I still have my picture of Harry Styles on my desk because I can. And now onto this crazy looking thing. This is like my filming rig. I guess is what you can call it. Matt kind of custom built this for me because I didn't really have a lot of space to have like a tripod and stuff and I need like a little light, I need something for my microphone, something for the camera, all of that to be held kind of in one place. So Matt figured out whatever this is based off of like a monitor stand. So it's a really strong clamp onto my desk and we drilled some holes through the metal to fit like the mic stand. This is for the camera. And then I have this that can like bend and move around. So it's pretty easy to use. You just kind of have to move like some of the poles around. So like if I needed to use my mic, I just pull it over and then kind of like pull the whole arm down. This mic is the Blue Snowball and I just have a pop filter on it that mounts onto the arm. It's like the basic snowball. It's a pretty cheap mic and yes, my audio sounds good sometimes because Matt knows how to mix audio. So this is really easy because I can just like push it up out of the way and like to the side like so I have my space back over here and it's not like in in the way. So same thing with like the light, the camera mount and everything like everything is just adjustable depending on like how much space I have or what I'm trying to do. So very cool invention by Matt. So moving on to the question that you guys have all been waiting for is everything about my iMac. Now it took me a long time to upgrade to my iMac. I had an early 2014 MacBook Pro for years. I still have it. It is on some 10th life or something. It is on its last legs. Um, it's taken cans of seltzer, coffee, water has fallen downstairs. I have used and abused it to no end. And so I finally upgraded to my iMac like early, mid last year. So early 2020. And it was a very big purchase because I've never really like seriously bought a computer like this. And I'm really happy with it. It's an absolute beast of a machine. I know a lot of designers like using PCs, but this is what works best for me. It's what I enjoy. So the specs for this, I'm gonna act like I know what any of this means. Matt helped me build this because he knows a lot more about computers than I do. So this is the iMac Retina 5K 27 inch 2019 model. It has a 3.7 gigahertz, six core Intel Core i5 processor. Yeah. <laughs> For memory, it has 16 gigs. My graphics card is the Radeon Pro 580X 8 gigabyte. Do with that information what you will. But there's not that many options when it comes to building an iMac, and I know that's why people like building PCs, and that's fine. But this is what we uh, kind of built out, and I think it does a pretty decent job. Do I have 
zero issues with how it can handle some of its like program processing. It's still gonna have issues like any computer, but it, you know, is a, is a kind of a powerhouse. Exporting videos on this has been a lot faster, which is why we initially, you know, really had the motivation to upgrade our computers because both Matt and I were working off of very old MacBook Pros that were nearing their death. Um, so it's, it's a beast compared to our old computers and I'm very grateful for it because I love her so much. And I guess I'll come up to my little webcam up here. Uh, we bought this for streaming and it just sits like right on top of my computer. And I also use it for like Zoom calls and stuff and everybody's like, oh my God, wow, your camera's so nice on Zoom calls and it's because I have that. And for cable management, I just let everything sit back here. Everything is plugged into a surge protector because I'm pretty sure that's what you're supposed to do, including my iMac. My iMac is plugged into the surge protector and I have no cable management whatsoever. My final section is going to be about the cats. I have three cats and I have an office space that is a separate room in our apartment and our cats are in here a lot. Their litter box is in here. We are in here all day. They obviously like <laughs> to be in where we are. Don't they come sit with me? <laughs> so our cats are in here a lot and we're thinking about making this space a cat-free zone, but it's really hard because our cats like being where we are. And we have a little mini cat tower in here that I can't really show you because it's by our window that they love sitting on all day. They'll just hang out here on the floor. They'll come in, use the litter box and everything. But it's hard to keep desks, especially desks that are covered in like electronics, clean and free of like cat hair and paw prints and everything. So it's definitely a challenge. We're constantly like wiping our desks down, constantly like dusting them and everything. It's just part of having cats and we have a smaller office space. So we're pretty cramped in here, but you know what? I like hanging out with these little dudes. They're fun. They make working from home fun. And I like because they cheer me up in the middle of the day. So I don't really mind. I like having them in here. And I feel like if we did make it like a cat free space, I would just be sad because they'd just be pawing at the door the whole time. So damned if you do, damned if you don't. I guess that's really all. That's really all I have. That's my desk, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching this. If you have any questions about any of my desk stuff, let me know in the comments below. And I just want to like disclaimer really, really quick. This desk setup took me a very long time to build, figuring out what I like, what works best for me, best for my budget, all of that. Do not think that like as a student, you need to like go build this desk setup. So do not feel like you need to spend money. You can get a lot of this stuff, like get a good desk at like a secondhand store and, or even like at like Target or something. You can get one for a pretty decent price that will, that'll last you a couple years. All my stuff I had is from Walmart or Ikea and I only upgraded in the past year when I decided to take things a little bit more seriously, uh, mostly because I had to. I needed a new chair, I needed a better desk that didn't shake every single time I used it. So, you know, don't rush out and buy like all this nice stuff, um, especially if you're strapped for cash, don't waste your money on stuff that is completely useless. So this is what works for me. I'm very happy with this desk setup and like I said, it took me a long time to build and figure out what I like the most and it'll be different for everyone. I know a lot of designers have some really crazy like monitor setups and everything. Everything. I'm fine with my one monitor. Maybe eventually down the road, I'll, if I have more desk space, I'll get a second monitor. But I do just fine with this one, this, this one right here. So um, thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. Um, if I miss anything, of course, let me know down in the comments. I'll see you guys in my next video. Goodbye. <laughs>